12. And we've been in this series, Reignite, for a couple of weeks now. But it's all about how much the Holy Spirit desires to work in your life. How much of his presence do you really want? How much do you want people to know? How much evidence do you want to give the people around you that God is at work in your life? It's going to be through the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. Because based on our own man, spiritually we could get lazy, spiritually we could get uh, tired, spiritually we can get worn out at times, but not when that Holy Spirit is at work in us. And we begin to see, uh, we've had some, uh, this week, some great connection groups that have started. Uh, I've been able to be a part of most of those. Uh, I think there was two of them that I didn't get to be a part of. But man, just hearing the conversation inside of it, uh, seeing people connect on a whole new level. If you're here today, uh, maybe you have kind of missed out on that connection side of things inside of a church because of COVID or whatever. COVID did one thing for us all. It proved that we need each other. It proved that the church, we need each other inside the church. And so connection has been one of those great ways. So just to catch you guys up, we talked about in these weeks prior that we reignite faith in others when we do the good that God has called us to do. Man, we can only do the good that God has called us to do when the Holy Spirit is at work in us. Because based on ourselves at times, I said it earlier, we just kind of throw it out and we're like, man, I don't know if I want to do those things today. The the other thing that we talked about, we reignite integrity. Some of you have seen maybe uh, other churches at times that are on TV and, and, uh, man, there's just some weird things that at times get said and you're like, man, is that that weird? Is that just me? Is that, like, if I really give $10, is is God going to give me 10000 back? Like, if, if I lay my hands on the TV screen, am I really going to be healed? Like, there's a lot of stuff that happens out there with TV preachers and all that kind of stuff. And so, the good thing about this is, is that we reignite integrity with believers and the non-believing world when we use our gifts, our spiritual gifts, correctly. Every one of you that are here, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ... You have at least one spiritual gift that God has wired you to be able to put that into practice. Here's my fear is that you would live your whole life and not really understand what your spiritual gift is. It may be that you have two or three or four that really work amazingly well together. Man, let's talk because I would love for you, uh, even talking with a few of our members this last week, just how God can use your wiring and your spiritual gift. He's always going to use it for your good, more so even good for the church, but it's always should be used for his glory. But we get to show the world integrity when we use our spiritual gifts in the right way. Here are some of those seven that are listed in Romans chapter 12. The gift of prophecy, making known God's will. Uh, his truth and his purpose, serving. Man, if you walked in here and you saw all the tables and all of the stuff set up and you see people that brought food, all of this stuff, like those are people who if they don't have the spiritual gift of serving, they're faking it really well because they do this stuff all the time and making a school look and feel like a church. Teaching, there are many very gifted teachers inside of this room. Inside of our connections right now, most of us, we're using the spiritual gift of some people uh, that are on Right Now Media, and we're using our people to be able to build connection inside of those groups, and it's working really, really well. Then there's this gift of exhortation, encouraging God's people to do what God's people should be doing. That's that gift. Uh, And then giving. Uh, Can't wait to share more about that one. Leadership, guiding and managing the people of God. And I don't know if you've if you've got that gift and you you're trying to figure out, man, how can I put that to use? It's called connection. We would love to use you inside of connection. And then the one that I struggle with the most, maybe I hope that there are plenty of you here today. Mercy. Any mercy people? Two of you. Oh, we're all okay, we should just Mercy like that. Mercy is the one that I struggle with the most because more times than not when I hear somebody say, man, I, I do this and then I struggle and then, I, and then um, what what'd you do to, to, to stop doing that? Like, did you, did you change a pattern? Did you do something? And, well, no, kind of fell back into, like to me, I just want to tell people, quit doing that, right? Like that's, that's the non-mercy side of me. If you've got mercy, then every time that person falls back into you, you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me help you. Oh, I, I, but mercy, the, the, the non-mercy people were like, come on, get it together. Like any of those people, non-mercy, yep. Uh-oh, we're in really bad shape. Just kidding. Um, so if you saw the non-mercy with mercy, then y'all be friends, okay? Because y'all will balance each other out. 
You can be good cop, bad cop, all right? Um, but then the third point before we hit what we're going to hit today, we reignite the power of the one when we're all one. Here's what I've seen here for three years. In this place, 99.9% of the time, we have been one. And I believe we've gotten to this place three years down the road now because we have continued to be one. We've continued to laugh together, set up together. And that's what, on all of those tables, there are at least three pictures that are pyramided on there that says something that we've done together. There was a day uh, that Mama Kay and I dressed alike, and I said, dressed alike together. But all of those things, we've, we've paraded together. We have loved on kids together. We have done so many things Together, And that's the greatest thing that I believe the mark of any great church is that we do what we do together. Let's continue to do those things. So today, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll start in verse 14. But I just want to say this. Everything today, these points will say, talk about three years and then moving on from that point. So number one, three years together turns into 30 years together when you know that you matter greatly to God. My bet is is that some of you showed up today and in your heart of hearts, you believe that God loves that person. You believe that God loves that person. Oh, they had their hands up in worship and God must really love that person. And I just want you to know that no matter where you have been, no matter your track record, no matter your struggles, no matter what, I want you one to know that when you walk in those doors, it's okay to not be okay. But it is so not okay to walk out those doors and to feel alone and to carry those same burdens and struggles. I want you to know that God loves you greatly. In fact, I believe God loves you enough that if you were the only person on the planet, he still would have sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you. And I don't know how I can put that on, put it on, on steroids and make that, blow that up any bigger, but if God would do that for all of us, I believe that God would do that specifically for you. He did. He loves you. You matter to him greatly. Look at verse 14. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, part of, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less of a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell? And he's painting this huge picture to say it takes all of us. Each part matters. And because you're here today and because you go out into this world as a believer, what you do, what Scott does at the fire department matters. What Chris Casey does in Van Horn with all of the guys that work to build all of the things that launch rocket ships up, like, that matters. You teachers, where you are at matters. You get to be Jesus in a setting that I don't get to be Jesus in. You you get to do things out there. And if you were here the other day, then, then, then you heard Ellen Cole, you heard her story with uh, Mid-Cities Women's Clinic. Like, you got to hear how God brought her to where she is now. She has a super unique story. God has uniquely used her and her story to get her to a place. She mattered all of those years and what she was struggling with. She mattered greatly. And so everything that you've gone through, you went through it for a reason. You didn't just go through it for you. You went through it to help other people get through it. And I truly believe that that's the only time that really in your life that God's going to get the ultimate glory is when you use your struggle. Maybe you went through a, a bitter divorce. Man, tough time in your life, right? How do you help somebody else go through? Because my bet is is that there are other members of the body who have been through one or who are about to go through one who need to know how did you steer through that and continue to hold tight to the Lord. Man, I don't know what it is that you're going through. I don't know what it is that you went through. But if if you never get to that point where you are able to share that with other people and then to help them get through it, man, I don't know that you're doing fully what you could be doing to show other people that they matter and to thank God that he brought you through that struggle. 
I hope that makes sense. But you, your part, you matter to God. And what you have gone through with him, other people need to know that. How much do you matter? Here, if you look at that word matter, I just kind of came up with a, a, a little an a, a acronym for you to be able to remember. My attitude towards this, whatever this is, my attitude towards this encourages reaction somewhere. Does that make sense? So however you handle your situation, you matter. And then how you handle it, it matters. It matters greatly. Your attitude. I, tell all of, I used to tell all of our leaders when we were going to camp, as soon as you mention to a group of students, man, it sure is hot out here. Now every one of your students, they are sweating. They are so hot. They just want to go inside. As soon as you say that it is, I'm sweating. As soon as you take a turn negative, you know, maybe at work, maybe inside your own house. As soon as you go negative, maybe some of your teachers, if you say one negative thing in your classroom, all of a sudden, all of your kids went that way. But there are negative people in the world that need your Jesus positivity. And if you're having a bad day on that day as a believer, just think about the people who don't have Christ in their life, how quickly and how easily it's going to be for them to go negative. What are some of those reactions? Some of you, maybe it's rage. <laughs> Road rage, anybody? The rest of them are lying. We're all together in that, okay? Uh, may, maybe for some, it's just rational thinking. Maybe that is the result of, for some of you, if you would begin to think through things uh, rationally, if you would begin to think through those things, maybe there's some people around you that would start to think about things rationally. Uh, what about just raw emotion? Like, in the, like I, I am raw emotion inside of watching my daughters play volleyball. Other dads, moms, okay, yep, yep, raw emotion people. Uh, usually uh, raw emotion towards the ref. Right? Okay, okay. Uh, I'm not alone. Thank goodness. There's the, no mercy part, right? Okay. Um, retaliation. Hopefully this is not us, right? Retaliation, like that's, that shouldn't be our MO as believers. Uh, reassurance. Did you ever think how you might be the reassurance that people need in their lives? Like how you handle things, how you handle stress, how you handle uh, moments, that you may be the reassurance how you handle, how you matter in that moment, how you do that. Uh, and then here's another one, restoration. It may be that some of you inside this room, that you are the key. God is waiting on you for the restoration for your family. He's waiting for you to go, okay, I'm going to be the bigger person. Maybe in your neighborhood, maybe in your cul-de-sac. I don't know, maybe with somebody that you work with, that you need to be the restoration that somebody else. You matter in how you handle life's circumstances and situation. It really does matter. So, how's your attitude been lately? Man, this week my attitude's been great. This has been a fun week. Getting all of these pieces together, like I live for these kinds of events and things, but, but to be able to share what we're going to share, like this week has been one of those easier weeks, although very intense, very hard to get all of the pieces together, but I hope that your attitude has been one that's been able to encourage others because you matter. It matters how you portray Christ in your life. Number two, point number two, 1 Corinthians, look at verse 18. Three years together turns into 30 when every member ministers. See, I think you look at me and you go, that's your job. I think you look at it and go, well, as a campus pastor, uh, you, you should come and you should knock on the doors in my neighborhood and you should invite these people to come and you should do all of those things. And I love that. And I, I hopefully I've proven to you that I will jump in and I will, I will go probably longer and I will probably walk faster and I will probably walk to more houses than you will. I, I just probably will do that. But it's way better if you live next door to them than me knocking on their door. Me, I'm a stranger. You live next door to them. Might be strange that you're knocking on their door to give them an invite to the church. Maybe even stranger if they didn't even know you went to church. Right? But when you minister, when you jump out and you do it, man, uh, there's not a whole lot of people that do that outside of Sundays. Like, we, we kind of set aside, we compartmentalize God on Sunday, right? God, I'll do that. Sunday morning. I'll get up early and I'll drive and I'll do that thing on Sunday mornings. Look in verse 18. But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. 
If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greatest honor. And our unprecedentable, uh, unpresent, yep, struggling here. Unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which are more presentable parts do not require. So here's the deal. He's just saying that all of this, all of these pieces, when they're doing the right thing, when you and I are ministering, when you or I are living at a higher level, when we decide with the Lord, man, I want to live for you greatly in this moment. Some have chosen this this new route of going and doing connection stuff. Man, I, I believe it's so honorable. And I think for me, it's because the reason I'm loving it is because I was in charge of doing student ministry for so long. And, and so my, uh, my connection time, there weren't outside groups, right? There were only Sunday morning groups where we were. And so I didn't get to be a part of that with other uh, adults my age. Uh, most all of my conversation were with teenagers. Some of you are like, that's what's wrong with you. Okay, I see it now. But when we opened the door here and we continued down that path, Man, it, was, it has been so much fun. And so some of you are like, man, how do I get to be a part of one of those? Charles is sitting on the front row. He was so nice to bring me water, and I appreciate that. Um, but Charles, when we're done, he's got all kinds of information. There is at least one in every zip code that is right here, probably within five mile, uh, for sure seven mile radius of where we're at. So if you want to take your relationship uh, with the Lord to a new level, if you want to take your relationship with other believers to another level, there's an opportunity for you to do that. You matter. And then if all of us would do our part, I promise you, we would look like this every Sunday. Somebody asked me back there earlier, he's like, is this a good Sunday? For you? Well, one, every Sunday is a good Sunday, right? But, but when you get to pull out chairs for anything like this, this is a great day. This is an awesome day. Man, we would do, here's the cool thing about Cross City North. We would set up all of these chairs and do all of this if only those who came in and were here just to set those things up. We would do that anyway, but when we get to do it for you and we get to do it for your friends, for your family, man, this, this blows my mind. I love this opportunity. So here's a great, uh, great quote for you. To minister means to actively join or to socialize with other people. It may be that some of you are here and you're antisocial. You're like, eh. People, hmm. like right now, maybe you're a little uncomfortable, right? You're like, when this is over, I'm going to have to talk to people. And when you go over there, if you sit down at a table, some of you are like, how can I get to a table where it's just us? I just want to challenge you today to jump out of antisocial bubble and into social bubble and just see what God does. Man, find out where the people around you, find out where they're from. Find out if they're in a connection somewhere. Our connection people, they're going to be going table to table. They're going to be encouraging you to come to theirs. I promise you. They, you may get like bothered with them. I don't know. But they're just trying to love on you and to try to help find you a spot so that you can be connected. So in ministry, it means I physically and spiritually join my talents, my gifts, and my heart with yours to see the church grow. Like, like really, truly, everything that we do at Cross City North should be to see what? Growth happen. You personally should be for you to be able to take your first step or your next step with the Lord, but to also to be able to grow not just spiritually, but then also numerically, Right? Like, if, if God didn't care about the numbers, then there wouldn't be a book called Numbers. And if God didn't want the church to grow, then he wouldn't have had a book called Acts that shows us, hey, here's the nitty and gritty about how churches grow. Usually it's around food. Usually it's around fellowship. And usually it's around teaching the word. We are great at all of those things. Great at all of those things. So, um, if, if, if I can minister in my world while you minister in your world, the worst thing that can happen is that our worlds collide and your people meet my people. And then it's somewhere in there we get to see them come to know Jesus. Like today at the end of our service, if we saw 10 people, 5 people, 1 person who made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, who would not be stoked on life in this room? Anybody? None of you? I leave. I'm done. Like, if that's not what we are here for, guys, then I I do. I quit. I'm just dead honest. If that's not what we're here for, to see 
spiritual growth happen and to see people come to know the Lord. Like, it's not just us four and no more, right? Nothing about Scripture ever says us four and no more. Some of you, well, Jesus had the three. Well, then he had the 12. Then he sent out the 72. And then 3,000 came, right? So, so it's not just us four and no more. It's all of us together. It's all of us together. So uh, you have ministered well for three years now. Congratulations. Do we have what it takes to go the distance? Do we have what it takes to go 30 years into this? I'm sitting there and I'm looking at, man, 30 years, I, was, I would be pastoring at 81. Let's go. Let's go. If I'm out working and out running some of you at 81, that's awesome. Pops outruns a lot of us, and he's 95, still trucking. Keep it up, my friend. Uh, ministry is the heartbeat of each of our connection groups. It really is. Uh, and, and, and every one of our ministry areas, Clay started one today uh, in Philippians uh, with men. Uh, Shara started one in Philippians today with our women. Clay Gibson started one uh, in Philippians today with our students. There is something uh, at 9 o'clock for you. There's something on Sunday night for you. There's something on Wednesday night for you. There's something on uh, Sunday night. I think I already said there's something on Friday night. Like there is an opportunity for you to take your next steps with people. Point number three. Three years turns into 30 when we matters more than me. I think this is where we get sidetracked a lot. Right? Because we, we, we get in our routine and we get into our, 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 our settings. We get into our groups. And then more times than not, me matters more than we. And I just want us to get out of that mindset. I want us to get out of that. If we're going to go the distance, then we've got to put we, not just here, but we go out those doors like our, our neighborhoods, our, our, whatever we can do for the City of Trophy Club or Roanoke. Like we've got to put we over me. Look at 12 uh, in verse 24. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Verse 26, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. That, that's why that word together is on every one of those pictures out there. Because everything that we've done for three years, what have we done it? We've done it together. And it took all of us. I remember our first kids craze in here. Some of those pictures are in there. Uh, and, and just how many people that it took, and this place was packed, and then uh, God sent the, the flood, and I thought Moses was, I mean, uh, Noah was going to be trucking in here in the ark. Like, like, it was so fun to see all of the people just helping each other. It was a beautiful event, and we've done so many great things since that time, but God has showed up in so many great ways. So the things that we do best, we do them together. Why? Because we matters more than me. And I have my way of how I want to do things. You have your way in how you want to do things at times. But when we put those things aside for the greater good of the others, it's a beautiful picture. Look at those words that speak volumes about we over me. No division. The same care for one another. One suffers, all suffer. One's honored, all rejoice. And this has helped us get to this three-year mark. I don't know if you remember our one-year mark. We kind of did the same setting, uh, action-packed, 237 people in the room. I was blown away. Like, I could barely get through my sermon that day. Just, I was so excited, to, uh, just what God had done. And then, uh, boom, not too far after that, COVID hit. And, man, we have bounced, and we have uh, done everything that we could possibly do to keep the ball rolling, to keep meeting together, and to keep seeing what God might do if we would just show up. And I'm honored, man, I'm blown away that you guys would stay the course. Maybe you showed up on a Sunday and you didn't know where we were at that Sunday because we had to move to a new site or whatever the case. You've stayed the course. Do you matter more than others? Because if you matter more than others, then you will maybe always take that selfish more, it's more about me than it is we. Um, have you ever been a part of a winning team? Raise your hand. Been a part of a winning team. Maybe you're part of one right now. Maybe it's uh, your work team. Maybe it's a, a softball team, baseball team, whatever the case may be. Like, like to be able to be a part of that team. Like, can you just walk up? Like, you see a great softball team, and then all of a sudden you just, you just walk up. And like, hey, I'm here. Put me in. You know. 
Now, man, you, you've got you to gotta know those people. Uh, you probably had to pay your dues. You, you probably had to get the, the jersey, right? Like, there's some steps that you got to take. And I just want to tell you today, like, this is a winning team. Like, what God has been doing for three years, he's going to continue to do that. What God's been doing in our kids and in our students, man, what happens in that gym, that is a winning team in that gym for your kids. If you're looking for a place for your kids, man, Bring them here. Allow them to be a part of what God is doing in there. Man, winning team up here in worship, uh, when all of that is working together, man, that, it, it sounds so good when it's all together. And we've got so many winning pieces of it, and I believe you're a huge part of it. I really do. You are a huge part of how we're winning here. When I call people that are here for the first time, man, what they're talking about are the people that they met here, the people who are out in the parking lot, the people just inside the door, the people who loved on their kids. It's rarely about the, the message. It possibly is going to be about worship. But, but, man, when we do all of those things together, that's a winning team. That's a winning team. And what I get to share today, man, there are people who are believing in what this winning team is doing. It's amazing and phenomenal to be a part. But we're only going to continue to win when you and I are we over me and we put our spiritual gifts to work for the kingdom. When you put all that God has put inside of you and how you are wired. My bet is that some of you here today, you're frustrated with where you are spiritually. You're frustrated maybe that... that um, you're not serving or you're frustrated. Maybe you don't see maybe all the connection. Whatever. I just want to tell you, every one of these groups, they're wide open for you. Like, we would love for you to be a part of that and to take a next step with us. We would love nothing more than for all of that to happen. When me gets over we, anything is fair game. Like, anything's going to take a bad turn when me gets over we. But when we gets over me, Man, I tell you, we can go gangbusters for the next 30 years. I can't wait to see what God does. So kids, if you're in the room, maybe you have done all of the word searching and all of that kind of stuff. I just want you to keep that mentality. Students, keep that mentality. If you're going to be a part of any winning team, man, that team cannot just be about you. This team here can't just be about me. can't just be about you. It's got to be about all of us. And so in the days ahead, when we begin to plan for some big stuff, like it's, we've got to think about all of us, right? We've got to figure out how does God take us to a whole new level. I'm going to get you to bow your heads and to close your eyes this morning. I just want you to think through a few things with me as we move into just a time of invitation and then we move into uh, just a, a great time of, of just celebration and all of those pieces. You're the body of Christ. Everything about you as a believer says everything about the Jesus that you love, the Jesus that you serve. Man, when people meet you, like, do they see the excitement that you have in Christ? When people show up here, like, do they see the excitement that we have that they are here? Do we care about them greatly? Kids, do you care about your friends at school? Maybe people that you don't even know quite yet. Do you care that they would know the Jesus that you know? Students, do you care that your friends, junior high, high school, that they would know the Jesus that you have? It matters. You matter. We matter. What happens inside of this church, it matters. You are the body of Christ. But only if you have made that decision to trust Christ with your life. And it may be that you're here today and you're frustrated just with life because you've never come to that place where you have placed all of your faith, all of your hope, all of your trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through me. So if you're here today and you've never taken that first step, man, there's no way you'd be able to take steps two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 100 until you take that first one. And sometimes that first step is the hardest one. Sometimes that first step is the biggest one. You begin to worry about what people are gonna think, what people are gonna say. Today, think about what God thinks about you. Think about what God cares about you. Think about what God says to you in this moment. And if you've never trusted Jesus Christ for your salvation, today is that day.
It's as easy as accepting, accepting what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, believing wholeheartedly, asking him to be Lord and Savior of your life. Some of you at some point in time, maybe you asked him, Jesus, to be your Savior, but you never allowed him to become Lord. Lord means boss. It means master. It means he is the one that begins to run things in your life. And then confessing those sins. And in that moment that you ask Christ in your life and you confess that you have sinned, the Bible says that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. So today, maybe it is that you need to stop. You need to ask him into your life. You need to make that first step in believing him, confessing, and then the rest of it, being devoted to him for the rest of your life. Being devoted. You can't live off of what mom or dad or your granddad who was a preacher, you can't live off of his devotion. You can't live off of their baptizing you as an infant. You had no part to play in that. Your relationship with the Lord, it's all on you and him. So if you're here today, You've never done that, man. We would love nothing more than to be able to help. Kevin Crenshaw's over there. He would love to help with that. We've got a whole team. Chris Casey is here. He would love. We've got decision stations on both sides of the room. If you're here and you would like to take that first step or your next step, some of you heard about connection throughout this whole thing. Great way to figure out your spiritual gifts. Talk to me, talk to Charles Lamb before you leave today. We would love, that would be a great way for us to celebrate, to see life change happen and to see connection begin. Awesome stuff. I'm gonna pray. If you're here today, please know you don't have to walk out those doors the same way you walked in. You can walk out completely changed. You can walk out completely new. You can walk out in a relationship with Jesus Christ like you never knew you could have before. God, today, would you show up in these people's lives this week in such a real way? Would you show up in my life in such a real way that everybody that I encounter, that they would be able to know that I walk closely with you? Would you help us to tap into to your energy, your, your strength, your power, so that the people that are around us, that they see that we live with a different kind of power than everybody else? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. God, we love you. Jesus, we're blown away by your love for us. We're stoked on life that that you would allow your Holy Spirit to live in us, to point us to all of those good works that you've got in store for us to be able to do for your glory, for the sake of your church, to see people come to know you. Can't wait to see what you will do in the years ahead. We love you, we trust you, and it's in your name that we pray it all. Everybody said? Amen.